interesting if you could stay all through. I know we're here for a great experience. But we have to run fast today. God will, is ready to show us his mighty wonders in the land of the living. My father in the Lord is a teacher, and he trained me to be a teacher. I remembered a long time ago. He'll call me. He'll say, Pastor Dupe. I'll say, me, Pastor. It's not possible because I didn't see myself. But guess what? God told me who I was. And God told him who I was. And today, by his mercy, I am not standing here on my own. But God equipped me, wired me. So we're going to start with that. This month, the month of mercy, was declared by God's servant, God, by God through the, our Father in the Lord, that it's a month of mercy. The topic, in case you're looking for topic, I'm not very good with topics, but in case you're looking for topic, we can title it, The Guarantee of God's Mercy. But do you know what? We can't really teach this topic called mercy until you know God. So we are going to start with this. Who is your God? Who is my God? I'm going to start with that. My God is sovereign. You can write that down if you're taking notes. My God is sovereign. Can we have that? Yes. Who is our God? Our God. You can personalize it. My God is sovereign. He's the only one that created all things. In the seen, that's, you can see it visibly, and the unseen, the invisible realm. And he has authority and power over everything in both realms. He's the one who has no beginning. Your God has no beginning. And he's the one that has no end. Your God has no end. Okay, maybe I should say it. My God and Pastor Sanjo's God has no end. What about your God? He's the only one who exists outside time. And regulates all things. Kata, kata. One of our pastors here loves to say he's the perfect arranger. He will arrange good things for you. Yeah. This month, good things will land in your hand in the name of Jesus Christ. He's the only one that can kill the flesh, the soul, the spirit. He exists in both realms. So you need not be afraid of those who cannot kill the soul. Who you need to be afraid of is who? God. Because he exists in both realms comfortably. That's the God of Pastor Sanjo Dwyer. That's my God. Is he your God? Is he your God? Who is our God? Our God is love. Remember, we're talking on the subject mercy. But we want to, first of all, understand the nature of our God. Who is our God? Our God is love. Someone say, my God is love. He's the embodiment and substance of love. He's the one that does all things on account of his unfailing love. God loves you. He will cross mountains. He will do anything because he loves you. I think somebody needs to affirm that. You need to say it out loud. God loves me. Your neighbor didn't hear it. You need to put a little bit of volume to that. Do you know what? I think you're saying it this way because you yourself, you are not certain. You need to say it with conviction. God loves me. Say it louder. Glory! Our God is a God of love. He's the one that knows all things. The actual, the possible. Everything working simultaneously. God is perfect. My God, your God is mercy. God is mercy and his attributes, the attributes of God can be seen in his mercy. Let's look at Exodus chapter 34 verse 6. Exodus chapter 34 verse 6. Moses had been walking with God and Moses wanted to know God. He now said, God, please, who are you? And God passed before him and proclaimed, this is who I am. Let's read it together in a loud voice. One, two, three, go. The Lord. The Lord. Let's read it from um, the B part. That after the Lord passed before him and proclaimed. Let's read that place together. One, two, three, go. The Lord. The Lord God. 
merciful and gracious, long-suffering and abounding in goodness and truth. That, uh, the seven, seven, verse 7, the A part. Keeping mercies for thousands, forgiving iniquity and transgressions of sin. Oh, let's stop there. God himself is a God of mercy. And he demonstrates his mercy in that he is full of compassion. He demonstrates his mercy in his love, his kindness, his forbearance. He is swift to act in your favor, in my favor. Psalms 103 verse 8 says, merciful and gracious. He is slow to anger and gets war, abounding in mercy. You cannot end his mercy. Psalms 136, from the first verse to the end, 26, we might not go there. Every verse tells of how God's mercy endured forever. You can't exhaust his love. You can't exhaust his mercy. His mercy endures forever. And guess what? God's divine mercy is partial. God's mercy is divine partiality. Let's look at Romans chapter 9, verse 11 to 14. You might wonder this. Why will God's mercy be partial? We'll get there. Romans chapter 9, verse 11. We might not read it all, but let's go because of our time. For the children not yet being born, not having done any good or evil, that the purpose of God according to election might stand. Not of works, but him who calls. Continue. Hallelujah. It was said to her, the older will serve the younger. 13. And it is, as it is written, Jacob I love, but Esau I hated. What shall we say then? Is there unrighteousness with God? Certainly not. Is there unrighteousness with God? Certainly not. Do you know why we cannot say there's a righteousness with God? Apart from the fact that God is God. Remember, we started with the fact that he's sovereign. He does all he wants to do. But we need also to understand that our God is a choosing God. Someone say, my God is a choosing God. God chose Abraham and not Lot. God chose Isaac and not Ishmael. Do you see the nature of God? He's a choosing God. God chose Sarah and not Hagar. God chose Jacob and not Esau. Is he partial? God chose you. God chose me. God chose us. Is he partial? In your family, there are so many people that you have Talk and talk and talk and talk. Come and be born again. They refuse. They were not chosen. But you were chosen. You were chosen. God's servant, our father in the Lord, said he was in a beer parlor. But because he was chosen, he left that place and gave his life to Christ. You are here seated today because you are among the chosen. You are among the chosen. Do you know what? God chose Joseph to be the deliverer and not any of his brothers. Among the twelve was Judah the firstborn. Was Judah the firstborn? But who, no, Judah was not the firstborn. Reuben was the firstborn. But who holds the scepter? Judah. Judah was the lawmaker, the kingmaker. It's choice. Celebrate the God of choice. Celebrate the God of choice. Hey, reka shokata rabarabarabaraba. I am the one he has chosen to show mercy. Guess what? God chose you and I to make me and you a vessel of mercy. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. God, let's have that. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4. God chose us in Christ. Before the foundations of the earth, he predestined you and I. He chose us to be his very own, joining us to himself, even I think somebody needs to read this. Even before he laid the foundation of the universe, you have been chosen. Because of what? His great love. He ordained you and I so that we will be seen as holy in his eyes with an unstained innocence. 
right from the foundation of the world, you have been chosen. You are not a biological mistake. You are not here by abracadabra. God chose you right from the foundation of the earth. Even when you did not know, like the song the choir said, ah, please celebrate the both choirs for me. Let's celebrate them. Like the song the choir said, even when I was a little girl, wallowing, wallowing, didn't know what to do, he chose me. Someone say he chose me. Ah, you are not confident. Someone say he chose me. God chose you. He predestined you right from the foundation of the earth. Let's quickly look at Romans chapter 8, verse 29 and 30. It's a wonder I am chosen. I'm in the beloved. He knew me. For those whom he foreknew. Hey, he foreknew you. He also predestinated to be conformed to the image of his son in order that he might be the firstborn among many. Do you know why he chose you? He chose you to show you mercy. He chose you that whenever he looks at you, you are righteous. You are a vessel of mercy. You are his own not condemned. You are not a vessel of wrath. He says, Pharaoh, I have ordained him to be a vessel of wrath. But for you and I, he chose us. Someone say he chose me. Just the way he chose Jacob and everything that happened in Jacob's life, it's transformed from one level to other. Because you are chosen, you will emerge. Because you are chosen, you will shine. God's mercy will lead you into greatness in the name of Jesus Christ. 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 9. Quickly. Oh, it says that God saved us and called us to his holy calling, not because of our works. Who saved us and called us to his holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given to us in Christ Jesus before time began. Even before you were in your mother's womb, God chose you. Do you know that? There were many people in your family, but you are exceptionally extraordinary. Some of us, our parents have even told us that right from the tummy, I noticed something. And when you came out, I noticed there was just something unique about you. True or false? You have been chosen. You are different. Have that consciousness that he chose you as a vessel of mercy right from the foundations of the world. Lift up your voice where you are seated and appreciate him for choosing you. You are not seated here by mistake. Just bow down and tell him thank you. Celebrate him for choosing you. Thank him for choosing me. Oh, I give you all the praise. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God expresses his mercy to you and I. How? God's mercy looks down to mankind and lifts them up. The mercies of the Lord does not keep you the same way he met you. Hallelujah. He understands that your nature is frail. He knows that you are a human being, but he lifts you up to cause you to shine. God's mercies has reached you today. You and I will have reasons to shine in the name of Jesus Christ. Mercy brings about transformation. Mercy does not leave you where it met you. I can go on and on. God's servant, Pastor Daniel Ikemba, on Thursday, he taught us extensively on that side. God saw a supplanter, a cheat named Jacob. But he said even before he gave birth to them, remember we read it earlier on, he said, Jacob I love, Esau I hated. But Jacob now came out and became a Wyoman. A man that when you see him, he's always looking for how to grab. Esau said, I know, just like your name is, you're a cheat. You're a thief. You stole from me the first time. Now you want to steal from me the second time, I will kill you. But God said, I love him. God loves you. Someone say, God loves me. No matter what you have gone through, God loves you. Mercy doesn't leave you the same. Mercy transforms you. Mercy makes you who he, God, foreordained you, foreknew you, predestined you to be. Just like I said earlier on, mercy raises, up, raises us up 
to all the potentials we are, we are to become in Christ Jesus. Jacob, a supplanter, had an encounter with the God of mercy and he became a noble man. Peter, when Peter first of all met Jesus, Peter was, his name meant, um, the meaning of his name was stone or pe uh, pebble. Hallelujah. But with an encounter with Jesus, get what, guess what happened to Peter? The word of God, let's quickly read it. The word of God in Matthew. Hallelujah. The word of God in the book of Matthew chapter 16 verse 18. Let's read it. What happened to Peter at the end? He said, and I also say to you that you are who? And on this, I will do what? I will build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail. When God met Peter initially, Peter was feeble. Peter was not stable. But when Peter had an encounter with mercy, mercy started transforming him. Mercy started building him. Mercy started molding him. And the same Peter that was unstable as water, always busy, Ah, doing one thing or the other. God transformed him and made him a solid rock. To the extent that before God left, before Jesus left this earth, he said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. If Jacob that was a supplanter, a wayo man, could be transformed to become a noble man. Peter that was unstable, he was shaking up and down. God transformed him when he encountered mercy and made him a noble man. Then guess what? There's another one that thrilled me. Mercy will locate someone here today. Mercy is transforming someone's life here today. Where you were yesterday, the name they called you yesterday. In your family, what you have been known as yesterday, that was yesterday. Because you have had an encounter with mercy today, things have turned around for good in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know this one man that thrilled me, Thomas? Thomas was a doubter. Thomas walked with God and his ministry for close to three years. But he kept on doubting. But there came a day, because he's a merciful God, Jesus didn't want to leave Thomas like that and pass on. Guess what, uh, guess what Jesus did? Let's quickly look at Romans, um, sorry, the book of John, chapter 20, from verse 27 and 28. John, chapter 20, verse 27 and 28. You will encounter God's mercy. Then he said to Thomas, reach your finger here. Because Thomas was busy doubting, saying, hey, is it true? It cannot be true. Jesus kept telling them, these are the things that will happen. Just like he has been telling some of us. He has been showing us, this is who you, you are. You will become great. You will do this. You will achieve this. But you are seated here. God, he will send Pastor Sojo to some of us. You will, there are millionaires in this place. You will look to your left. It's for you. You will look because in their accounts, maybe there's nothing. But God's mercy lifts you up in the name of Jesus Christ. God's mercy never leaves you the same way he met you. God's mercy draws you up. My dear sir, come, come. Hallelujah. When you have an encounter with mercy, you might be there. Please, let's show him. You might be there. But when mercy reaches down, he draws you. He draws you. He draws you. And you come to the level of God. He foreknew you. He predestined you to be like him. You are not meant to stay on the ground. Someone is rising up. Someone is rising up. You will no longer be where you used to be in the name of Jesus Christ. Mercy lifts you from where you are now to where God wants you to be in the name of Jesus. Let's look at Thomas. Thomas was a doubter. He looked and looked and said, ah, how can this be? He cannot be. He did. It's not possible. Oh, no, no, no. It's not possible. But the word of God said then, he said to Thomas, Jesus had to come and he had an encounter with him. He said, reach your finger here and look at my hands and reach your hand here and put it into my side. Do not be unbelieving, but be believing. Let's look at 28. And Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord 
my Lord and my God. Thomas saw his nakedness. Thomas saw that he had known one dimension of Jesus, but he had not known the merciful dimension. Thomas had to shout and said, I am sorry, Lord. I am sorry, Lord, because God, you are my Lord and my God. And you see, Bible history is recorded that from that moment, God transformed Thomas' life and turned him to another man. He did exploits for Christ. From that moment, he no longer doubted. Blessed are you that do not even see, you do not touch, yet you believe. God's mercy will lift you up. God's mercy will lift you up in the name of Jesus Christ. Whoever you are today, just an encounter with God's mercies turns you to another man. God lifts you up and makes you to become a better person. You must get to a point that you begin to desire more. Your efforts alone cannot get you to where you need to be. But mercy is the help of God that will lift you up. Mercy will produce extraordinary things in your life in the name of Jesus Christ. Do you know what? Mercy will bring out that your little effort and it will magnify it in the name of Jesus Christ. That your business, God's merciful hand will rest upon it and it will become mighty in the name of Jesus Christ. That your child that you don't even know how it's going to turn, God's merciful hand will rest upon him and he'll become a world changer in the name of Jesus Christ. That your wife, uh, your husband, your spouse, uh, that you really don't know what to do even about your marriage the mercies of God will rest upon your marriage in the name of Jesus Christ ah your health uh, that has been challenged God's mercy will rest upon it in the name of Jesus Christ your relationship uh, your, your relationship maybe you like that person and you don't even know what to do God's mercy will transform things and make it work for your good in the name of Jesus Christ leverage on God's mercy King David understood the power of God's mercy. He never lost a battle. It is in record that David never lost a battle because he understood mercy. Mercy sets you free. Yeah. Hey, you didn't say, you didn't understand that. David never lost a battle because he leveraged on the mercies of God. From today, by mercy, you will not lose a battle. God's power lifts you up in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus Christ is God's mercy to mankind. Jesus Christ is God's mercy to you and I. In the Old Testament, when God was constructing the ark, he asked them to construct the mercy seat. And the mercy seat, one of the things the mercy seat does is that every year, the priest will go in and will sprinkle blood on it. <clears throat> if it is accepted, throughout that year, everyone is accepted. If the priest himself is not accepted, then it will, it will be, you understand, throughout that year. Let's quickly look at Hebrews chapter 10, verse 11 to 14. But Jesus, Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 10, yes. And every priest stands ministering daily. And offering repeatedly the same sacrifice, which can never be taken away. Which can never take away sin. They, but they keep doing it. Keep do, they keep doing it. But this man, after he had offered one sacrifice for sin forever, sat down at the right hand of God. Let's keep going. From that time, waiting till his enemies are made... He's supposed to. Every of your enemy, by reason of mercy, they are made your full stool in the name of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Hey, somebody didn't hear it because you have a God. That is standing for you. That has entered the holy of holy once and for all. Anyone seeking your heart, they are becoming a full stool for you. You will kick them out. Someone kick them out in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's continue. Rom Hebrews, yes. From that time, for by one offering, he has perfected forever those that are being sanctified. You are chosen. You are sanctified by mercy. Jesus Christ is God's mercy. 
to mankind. Jesus Christ is by his death and resurrection. God declares his own righteousness for letting sinners go free. Do you know that? Because Jesus Christ came to this world, now you are no longer guilty. See, do you remember the story God servant? I'm time to be time conscious. Hallelujah. Do you know the story God servant told us last week about Cain? Immediately judgment came. Holiness of God stood up. And he said, no, Cain must die. Cain must be punished. But as holiness rose up, God's mercy rose up. And, you know, because God's mercy rose up, there was now no condemnation. Maybe you understand. But do you know what? Despite the facts, because judgment had been passed, and Cain must be a wanderer. Is that not true? So instead of going about, going about as a wanderer, God ensured that he had a city uh, that was named Wanda. So he became a citizen of Wanderer. Do you understand? So God's holiness was justified. Do you understand? But you see, when Jesus came, Jesus is God's mercy to mankind. Jesus came and at the coming of Jesus, God does not need any excuse whether to build a city called, uh, called Wanda or called blood, or called anything that he will push Dupe into, guess what? Immediately he sees Jesus. He is righteousness. He is my justification. He is my help. When Jesus steps in, I am free. That is why it is an advantage for you and I to become born again. When you are said Jesus, it's an advantage. How many Jesus lovers do I have in the house? It's an advantage because immediately God sees Jesus. He's not making an excuse that, hey God, why are you righteous? No, because his righteousness is in Christ Jesus. Jesus paid the price. He settled it all. And immediately Jesus is seen in you. Ah, because you are Jesus. Immediately Jesus is seen in you. No condemnation. Someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone shout hallelujah. hallelujah. Hey. Romans chapter 4 verse 25. Romans. I'm supposed to be rounding up by now. Hallelujah. Romans chapter 4 verse 25. Who has delivered up. Who was delivered up because of our offenses. And was raised because of my justification. Righteousness has been credited to your account. You can go and you can bank on it at all times. Hallelujah. Oh, glory. You can study these uh, scriptures when you get home. No time here. Luke chapter 1 verse 72. Um, Galatians chapter 4 verse 44 to 5. Righteousness has been credited to your own account. So some things. Hallelujah. How some things that we can assess by God's mercy. Some of the things that you and I can freely assess by the mercies of God. Quickly, I have six here, but I'm going to run through them. Number one, salvation. Ephesians chapter 2 from verse 4 to 10. TPT translation. I've read this before, but let's quickly go. It's, but God still loves us with such great love. He is so rich and in compassion and mercy. Let's go on. Even when we were dead and doomed in so many sins, he united us into the very life of Christ and saved us by his wonderful grace. Run, 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 run. Let's run. He raised us up with Christ. He raised us up with Christ, the exalted one. And we ascended with him into the glorious perfection and authority of the heavenly realm. So we are now co-seated as one with Christ. Where are you seated? Where are you seated? Continue. Calebro Kashaka. Continue. We are going to turn. Eight. Throughout the coming ages, we will be the visible display of the infinite, limitless riches of his, of his grace and likeness, which he showered upon us in Christ Jesus. Anytime anyone is looking for Jesus in the physical, they will see you. Somebody didn't get that. Anytime anyone is looking for Jesus, physical Jesus, they will see you. 
there was a time Jesus was moving about, but no more. You are the Jesus on earth today in the name of Jesus Christ. Continue. He said, for it was only through this wonderful grace that we believed in him. Nothing we did could ever earn this salvation. For it was the gracious gift from God that brought us to Christ. Nine. So no one will ever be able to boast. For salvation is never a reward for good works or human striving. Verse 10. We have become his poetry. <laughs> a recreated people that will fulfill the destiny he has given each of us. For we are joined to Jesus. God's servant, Pastor Dan, said we are yoked. You are tied. Where Jesus is, you are, you are just yoked there. For we are joined to Jesus, the anointed one. Even before, before, did you see that? Even before... Even before, even before you were born, God planned in advance your destiny, my destiny, and the good work he will do to fulfill it. God will fulfill good works in your life. You didn't hear it. God is said to fulfill something good in your life. Hallelujah. Some things you and I can assess by mercy. We said salvation. Deliverance from destruction. You are guaranteed deliverance from destruction. People of God, sleep with your two eyes closed. Be at peace. Evil will not come nigh thee by day, nor by night. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22. You are delivered through the Lord's mercies. I think we all need to read this together. One, two, three. Let's quickly read it. Through the Lord's mercies. Because his compassion will never allow you to be consumed. You will never be destroyed in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, another thing you can assess uh, by the mercies of God is fresh mercies daily. God's servant mentioned it last week. He says the mercies of yesterday may be in, ca in case he has worn off. There's a fresh mercy today. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 23. There's a fresh mercy today. Someone that says there's a fresh mercy for me. Say, say it loud. There's a fresh mercy for me. Oh, Lamentations chapter 3, verse 23. They are, let's read it together. One, two, three, go. They are great. God's faithfulness is new. Every morning there's something new for you. There's something new for you. There's something new for you. Don't sleep happy and wake up sad. Don't be depressed. Don't let anxiety overwhelm you. Do you know why? His mercies. They are new every morning. Today is better than yesterday. I thought I'd hear louder, amen. Today is better than yesterday. And tomorrow will be much better in the name of Jesus. One of the things you can enjoy by the mercies of God is favor, provisions. Psalms 102 verse 13. If you can quickly read that. You will arise and have mercy on Zion for the time to favor her. Yeah, the sad time has come. You have been delayed before now. But this month of mercy is your month in the name of Jesus Christ. Someone contract has just landed now. Someone good news has just landed now. Your time of mercy is now. Hallelujah. Health. Matthew 17, 15. Matthew 15, 22. Your health. You can assess health. Lord, have mercy on my son. For he is an epileptic and suffers severely. For he often falls into the fire and often into the water. When you read that place down, because of our time, we might not go. God not only healed him, but he restored him. That pain at the back, God restores it. That pain at your throat is totally restored. That headache, that headache that has consistently been nagging you, today marks the end in the name of Jesus Christ. Your health is restored in the name of Jesus. Some of the things you can assess by mercy. Oh. Death and the sting of death is removed by mercy. Death and the sting of death is removed by mercy. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verse 56. Death and the sting of death. Do you know in some places sometimes you don't necessarily see death. 
The business is not really dying. But you see effects of death around it. Every effect, every sting, every aroma of death in and around your environment ceases today by mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. Death, 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 and the sting of death dies by mercy. He says the sting of death is sin, and the strength of the sin is law. You see, we, we said it earlier on. When Cain killed Abel, judgment came immediately. But when mercy stepped in, when mercy stepped in, do you know what happened? Not only did Cain become an owner of a city, but he had children and he became prosperous. God's servant said it last week and I repeat it by the unction given unto me. If Cain, an unregenerated cost man, could become a city owner, no one in this assembly is permitted to die poor. Yeah. You will rise again in the name of Jesus. The wealth you and I are generating will shock our world. Your name is Pace Setter. Your name is House of Death Spring. You have been called to shine in the midst of darkness. In that your community, you will shock your world. In River State, Nigeria, your name, my name, will be mentioned among the noble in the name of Jesus. Guess what? My mother in the Lord, Pastor Keta Dwyer, will always say, we are not local champion. We are not permitted to stay under. I decree concerning you, internationally, mercy will take you. Your visa has just been approved. In the name of Jesus Christ, somebody is not hearing it. That school uh, that you are thinking of going abroad, God has just given you scholarship now. The power of death, the sting of death is gone. Nothing dies around you. Nothing is permitted. That baby in your womb will no longer die. Ah, no more miscarriage. No more miscarriage. You have, in fact, you have, you are tired. You don't want to do, go again. You feel that, I beg, let me just go and rest. But God asked me to tell you, don't give up. Mercy brings that baby alive. Mercy brings that baby alive. In the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, David killed Uriah. And immediately judgment came. 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse 9 to 12. But that judgment came. Guess what? <laughs> David was a wise man that understood mercy. In verse 13, let's quickly read that one, even if we can't read anything. Hey, time. David lied down on the ground. Can we read it? He says, so David said to Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said, David, the Lord also has put away your sin. You shall not die. It, you see... Mercy, when mercy comes in, when mercy comes in, mercy, David would have died though because he did a bad thing, a bad thing, but mercy, but mercy, and that will lead me to the next point. How do I assess this mercy that is available in Christ? How do I assess it? Let's take a cue from David. How do I assess this thing? He said, he's, you see, you have to have a humble heart and not a proud heart. Time will not permit me, but I will paraphrase. Luke chapter 18, verse 10 to 14. You have to have a humble heart. Two people went to church, just like you and I are in church today. One person came and said, Lord, you know I'm a Pharisee. I do this. I tithe. I do everything. In fact, I give everybody. He was busy. The other person came. Maybe we need to read. Uh, we don't have time. He, he, he came. He humbled his heart. He said, I'm not worthy to even look at you. You are the all-sufficient God. Who am I to look at God? To look at my father? And, who am I? Who am I? Luke chapter 18. Just let's read verse 14. He said, who am I? I've been downtrodden. And the, this 13... Okay, let me read it from there. And the task collector standing at Pharaoh would not so much as raise his face, his eyes to heaven, but beat his breast saying, God, be merciful to me, a sinner. Somebody needs to say that today. Yes. 
Now, let's go to 14. He says, I tell you, this man went down to his house justified rather than the other. For everyone who exalts himself will be humble. And he who humbles himself will be exalted. How do I assess the mercy that is available in God? Be humble. Tell your neighbor, sister, brother, be humble. The next one, because of our time, is a broken and a contrite heart. Hey! Psalms 51 verse 17, a broken and a contrite heart. The sacrifice of God are a broken spirit. A broken and a contrite heart. This, oh God, you will not despise. God will never despise a broken heart. Psalms 34 verse 18, quickly. A broken, the Lord is near to those who have a broken heart. And save such as have a contrite spirit. If you are haughty, if you are puffed up, God will not regard you. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, another thing you can do to assess the mercy available in Christ Jesus is you need to recognize your dependency in God and the finished work of Calvary. Oh, and the last one, because of our time, you must become a dispenser of mercy yourself. Matthew chapter 5 verse 7. I want to dwell here a little, just a little. Matthew 5, chapter 5 verse 7. Let's read it together. One, two, three, go. If you and I must obtain mercy, you must be what? You must be what? Quickly read. Matthew 23, 23. Read it. He says, I want you to read it in maybe NLT or Amplified, one of those other translations. Uh, he said, okay. What sorrow awaits you, teachers of religious law? And you Pharisees, <laughs> God called them what? God called them what? Look up. Don't look at your phone. Look up, look up. God called them what? <clears throat> you are careful to tithe, even the tiniest income from your herb gardens. But you ignore the more important aspects of the, of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. You should tithe. Yes, it's good to tithe. But you do not neglect the more important things. What are the more important things? Show mercy. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. If, you're merc if you want mercy from God, become a dispenser of mercy yourself. I am the one. Hey. Oh.
teenage service. The prodigal son got to a point he knew that his father, he had to go back. <laughs> he cried, I will arise. Someone seated here, you need to arise. Your father is a merciful savior. Your father is longing after you. Your father has been looking out. Is my son coming back? Your father loves you. He predestined you. He knew you right from the foundations of the earth and he's calling you. Hey, Blind Maximus, get what happened. Blind Maximus, people were stopping him. They were delaying him. He says, leave me alone. If I stay here, I will remain here. You will not remain on that spot. You will not remain on that situation. Blind Maximus jumped himself up. The Bible said he kept shouting. The son of David, have mercy. Have mercy. Someone needs to rise up today. Rise up on your feet. Begin to declare it. It's my season of mercy. It's my season of It's just not possible. But your mercy will take me out. Your mercy will lift me up from where I am down in that pit. He will take me up to be seated. I think someone needs to cry out for mercy. I am tired. I am tired. I need to move from where I am. Ban Batman saw his lack. David saw his lack. He cried out, Mercy. Someone shout, Mercy. Shout it loud, mercy. You need to shout it better, mercy. Now declare it, mercy takes you off. Mercy lifts you up. La braco shaka tarebo shaha. La braco shaba shere de 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 ha. Hey, braco shara bara bara baha. By mercy I'm transformed. By mercy I'm lifted. La braco shere bo shere de 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 ha. La braco shere bo shere de 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 ha. Holy Ghost. La braco shere de 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 ha. La braco shere de 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 ha. Thank you, mighty Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's celebrate Jesus as we have our seat.